Go Fishing. And today I'm pretty excited for this episode. One, I haven't uploaded anything in a long time. It's just been too crazy cold. I don't fish in the cold. I'm not good at it. It's something I might work on in the future. But until then, I think I might just stick with what we're going to do today. What we're doing today is pouring some swim baits. I'm not talking those little two, three, four inch swim baits, guys. Six inch swim baits is what we're going to pour today. Here's a couple of them that I recently got. Now this is an AI angling mold, six inch swim bait. I have yet to pour this one. Really looking forward to that. And the other one we're going to pour is this this awesome looking epic bait molds. This is the epic stud. Focus. There we go. This thing is a work of art. I'm telling you. I think I got the consistency part down. Um, doing the, the multi layers of colors or laminates is what they're called. So that's what we're going to do today. All right, guys. The first thing I want to do is make the shad dots. The kill spots on these shed. Um, a lot of people mostly pour them on. They they just pour them on just a tiny little dot straight from the Pyrex cup onto these. And I I can't do it, man. I struggle. So I just use a hole puncher. It's a pretty cool little technique. You get these little kill dots right here. You place right on there exactly where you want. And they're perfectly consistent every time so I'm going to make a couple a couple more dots for these shad and kind of just place them where I want to that looks about good and then we'll preheat this up this grill I want to set it to about 250 and warm it up enough so that these these dots start to melt onto uh, the mold itself because I have made the mistake of just sticking it on there closing the mold up and one time one of these dots fell off while I was making while I was pouring the top layer and that wasn't very good <laughs> so I'm just going to heat this thing up until these things melt and then we'll move into the next section all right, now that these are starting to melt onto the mold, I'm going to quickly pull them off and close them up. Let them cool down for just a second. If you let it run too long, it's going to melt the whole thing and it's going to become runny. We don't want that. All right, guys, this is the next step. We're going to heat up some of this dead on plastic. This blend is the crawl tube blend. This is specifically made for crawls and tubes, obviously, but it's a, it's a heavier blend. So you want to use these in swim baits that are four inches or bigger. So let's pour some of this stuff up real quick. This is a brand new bottle. I'm really excited to use this. I've been using the swim bait blend and it works pretty good. But this is what the pros say to use. All right, so we're going to pop this in the microwave. I'm just going to throw it on for three minutes and then kind of stir it along as I go. And then I'll add some colors in here shortly. All right, so we got our plastic here. Just gotta stir it up a little bit and check the temperature. All right, it's right at 349. I don't know if you guys can see that, but yeah. Let's see, yeah, right at 357. It's pretty hot, but that's all right. So what we're gonna do now is for the bottom, I'm gonna use some of this this Hobby Lobby powder right here. This is the Pearl X powdered pigments and the color is Macro Pearl. So this stuff is usually pretty transparent, but I'm going to add a fair amount to it. Big old heaping scoop. Just going to stir it up and see what 
what we get. And always, always, always don't forget to use gloves. You do not want to burn yourself on this hot plastic. That is, that's looking real good. I think I gotta keep stirring it here. Dab a little bit on the table and see what it looks like. Looking pretty good so far. The next thing I'm going to throw in here is dead on colorant. This is called Snow Shine. All right, let's add it in here. Not much, just three or four or five drops. Whatever looks good, really. I mean, a lot of the time, this is just figuring stuff out. What works and what doesn't. And believe you me, I've had a lot of trial and error. That stuff is looking pretty good. I think I need to stir it more. So. All right. Let's check the temperature on this. 300 degrees. Let's pop it in for another 30 seconds. Maybe 20 seconds. And then we'll pop it in the vacuum chamber to remove those air bubbles. All this vacuum chamber is doing is pulling all the air bubbles out of it. I just got this thing uh, just a few days ago and it, it's a game changer as far as making baits goes. I mean, I looked at my baits and it had perfect laminates, but so many air bubbles at the top. I just, it was just driving me nuts, so I had to get one of these. And what we're looking to do is just get it down here at the bottom so we know all the air is removed. All right, this temperature is right at 320 degrees. We're just going to pour up right into the hook slot area, right until the hook slot is covered. Nice and even and slowly. These molds are really hot, so chances of it of this plastic run into the back fins is not ideal but it, it happens so you just got to pour really slowly there we go that's perfect Now we let this plastic rest for 15, 20 minutes, have a drink of some nice beer, sit back and relax, and we'll work on getting the color started for the next layer. All right, I think this bottom layer is ready. A good way to test this is to blow on the plastic, and if it moves a lot, it's still too hot. And when it's too hot, you go to pour that second layer it's just going to bleed into the bottom layer and that's exactly what you don't want. I struggled with this for about five or six different iterations and I finally think I found the right temperature uh, to set the griddle in the right timing before I pour on the next layer. Still a little too hot. I'm going to give it like two more minutes. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some more plastic and we're going to mix up a chartreuse colored middle layer or bloodline or whatever you guys want to call it. The middle layer of this bait is going to be chartreuse. It's going to provide excellent contrast for the colors of these baits and it looks fantastic when you do it right. So let's pour some of this stuff up and see what happens. That should just about do it. 
check the temperature on it. 352, right on the dot. So the next color I'm going to be using is this Dead On Plastics, and this is Chartreuse. A little bit goes a long way with this stuff. It's fantastic though, man. Always make sure you shake it up real good. I got about eight dots in here. We're going to stir this up and see how it looks. <laughs> Stirring left handed is pretty awkward. <laughs> That's not looking too bad, guys. I think I think I want it just a little bit more. It's a little bit too transparent. Give it two more drops. Looks like a third one slipped in there. Stir it back up. See what it looks like. That's looking really good. Check out this color, guys. I don't know if this camera could do it justice, but this is bright. Pop it back in the microwave. Let it get back to 350, and then we'll throw it in the vacuum chamber. All right, so the next part of this, we want to pour just a tiny, thin layer right in the middle. And the trick is to make sure it's not blending in with that other plastic. And the other thing is we got to make sure it doesn't make it all the way to the tail piece. Because having this bottom layer of chartreuse mixed in with the tail piece doesn't look that good and if you catch it running at the end before it gets to the tail you could blow on it to stop it most of the time it works All right, I think that I think that one's good That one made it to the tail, guys. Son of a gun. It happens. Now we just got to let this set for about 10 or 15 minutes. Make sure that middle layer is pretty firm. And then we can move on to the third and final layer. Well, guys, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the pour so far. I can't wait to see the big reveal little bit bummed about my little mess up I poured a little bit too much of that chartreuse in the in the middle layer and it it ran into the tail it could be a happy accident like maybe having a little bit of chartreuse in that tail uh, could be the difference between a strike or not I, I don't know man I bet they'll still catch fish but I wanted it to be perfect uh, but there's, there's a lot of accidents in nature, guys, to be 100% honest. So if your bait doesn't look perfectly, I don't know, just perfect in general, it's okay because there's not a fish out there that has, is everything is perfectly symmetrical. Um, so those, those little imperfections uh, still make the bait very much unique. So that's one of the things I like about pouring my own baits. The other thing is I kind of feel like a fifth grader in art school man you know like I'm, I'm getting into colors I got some clay I'm trying to sculpt in to make my own swim bait mold so that might be another thing for another episode depending on how it goes but I'm really getting into this 
uh, bait making stuff. So let me know in the comments below if you guys like these baits. Uh, I'm really interested to hear some feedback from you guys as I'm fairly new at this. But I, I see a lot of potential, a lot of, a lot of potential for creativity. And that's what I love to do, man. Just be creative, whether it be uh, pouring plastics, editing videos, or writing music. It, it's something I'm passionate about. So we're going to kick back and drink the rest of this beer while this middle layer cools down. Then we'll do the third and final layer. So I appreciate you guys watching the video so far. If you like it, make sure you smash the thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel and you're into kayak fishing, belly boat fishing, bait making, deer hunting, things like that, make sure you hit that subscribe button right there. Stick with us, guys. All right, guys, I think uh, I'm going to change it up. I was going to do this color blue on the top. I've done it before. Beautiful bait. Probably the most gorgeous bait I've ever made. But I've only made about 15 or 20, so anyway. I was going to do this, but I think with that chartreuse in the tail, I'm pretty sure that it's not going to blend well together. That blue, just having a blue and a chartreuse tail, I mean, it might look cool. But I think I'm going to try this Dead On Plastics green dye right here. It's green paint. Focus, there we go. So let's pour it up. See kind of what colors we could come up with. Put five drops in here. Still looking a little transparent. That would look cool though. Four more drops. I like the way this is looking so far. Let's add a couple more in there. There we go. I don't want it to be too transparent. It's pretty transparent still. Let's add a little bit more in here. There, that that thick, that thickened up nicely. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. I think we're going to roll with this, guys. Check the temperature one last time. All right, let's get it back to 350. Then we'll throw it in the vacuum chamber to get rid of those bubbles. Last layer, guys. This is it, man. Then after that, it's the big reveal. All right, let's check the temperature of that. 327. Perfect. Final layer. Definitely over poured on that one. Wasn't paying attention. I think this color combination is going to turn out to be pretty sweet though. And I messed up that pour too. <laughs> oh, it is what it is. I was doing so good before, guys. I swear to you. Big time over pour. Man, I am semi embarrassed. All right, now all we gotta do is play the waiting game. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just leave this griddle on 
for probably 10 or 15 minutes. The temperature is currently at 250 degrees. That's what works for me. Um, a lot of people like them warmer and stuff, like all the way up to 350 or whatever. That's a story for another day. But anyway, after about 10 or 15 minutes, I'm just going to cut the power to this uh, and let them chill on that griddle for about one hour. It all depends. It all depends really like I've opened them up too soon and they just kind of split apart. I was super bummed because it was a really good looking bait. I just wasn't patient enough. But I like to use this um, temperature gauge, this digital thermometer and scan it, the bait itself to see if it's warm enough. Like right now it's at 225. I like to wait till it's down to 60 or 70 just to be safe. and. Usually at that point you could handle these molds with your hands and stuff like that. But but anyways, I really hope you guys are liking this video so far. Just let me know in the comments below. If there's any other crazy color combinations you guys want me to do, I'm down for it. Uh, I don't have a big selection yet, but I've already ordered a ton more stuff like glitter, other powders. I even went to Dip Your Car website and got some of those color shift pigments. Those things are going to be freaking sweet, guys. So let me know in the comments below what kind of bait fish I should make. Uh, I'll, I'm down to try anything. I love experimenting with this kind of stuff. So, yeah, just let me know, and uh, we'll see you guys back here shortly for the big reveal. All right, guys, time for the reveal. I'm just going to pinch the, the top of this layer down so I don't get that excess from that over pour if not it'll be really sticky later I hope, you, I hope you guys are as excited as me man every time I open one of these baits it's just like yes I did it I made a cool looking bait Sometimes it doesn't work out like that, but uh, you win some, you lose some. All right, I think I pretty much got it se as separated as I can. Yeah, that that plastic's good. Let's see what side it's going to come off on. Oh, that is looking good. That is looking so good, guys. Look at that beautiful bait. Let's get a close-up of that. Those colors turned out fantastic. It's got the, the dot on the side and everything. The laminate is perfect. Oh, man, that is sick. That is really cool. Again, I'm just going to press down on the sides of this because this aluminum has a really fine edge. And this just breaks the seal between. This just breaks the seal between the two blocks of the mold. Man, I am really digging this color. I hope this one turned out good too. Which side are you coming off on, bud? There you go. Wow. Look at that beautiful bait, guys. That is sick. Look at this sick bait, man. This is exactly why I'm getting, I'm really getting into open pours. All right, guys, check out these baits. I think they turned out beautifully. Beautifully. Look at these things. I don't know if you guys could see the color as good as I can, but this, this bait looks beautiful. Perfect laminate, good color combinations, no bubbles in the pour. I mean, it's, it's perfect. It's perfect. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's something I could do differently, but I'm looking at where these colors combined, these different layers, and there's no cold cracking at all. I freaking love making baits like this, guys. 
Well, guys, that's going to be a wrap for this video. I appreciate you guys watching. If you want me to do more of these swim bait pours, these bait making videos, please let me know in the comments below. I appreciate any and all feedback you guys give me. Uh, I love it. I want to learn and grow and put out the best content for you guys. So don't forget to smash that thumbs up if you do like the video. Hit that little subscribe button up there. Um, just so you guys can get notified of when I put out new videos and stuff like that. And also, if you want to see me on Instagram, just go to G2G Fishing. And you, will, you should be able to find my stuff. But I've been posting a lot of pics of these different swim baits that I've been trying out. Different color combinations. And some of them look really, really good. I'm really proud of proud of myself. Not to pat myself on the back too much. But it's been a blast, guys. We'll see you on the next one.